as if we already don't have enough problems in our elections, as if we already don't have an all-time low uh, faith in our electoral process here in America after everything that's gone on in the last four or five years. Folks, LFA TV has just stumbled onto some breaking news, and you have to get this out. The more we know, right? Why would the Armed Forces Communications and Electronics Association, the AFCEA, in partnership with Homeland Security and their critical infrastructure team, why would they be holding an actual cyber attack exercise on a massive scale on election day? I'm not kidding. This is a real thing. I'm going to show my cam- I'm going to turn my camera around and I'm going to show you the website. It is the Homeland Security Critical Infrastructure website. There's the website for anybody who needs it. 2024 Homeland Security Critical Infrastructure Conference in Atlanta, November 6th and 7th, but with a large scale tabletop cyber security exercise on November 5th, election day. I'm not kidding. Then it says down here, the critical infrastructure topic is only getting hotter. Come here, guest speakers, all levels within the government speaking on a wide range of topics concerning critical infrastructure. What are the trends? What different agencies are doing it? What contracts are coming out, budget issues, emerging technologies, etc. They'll speak on current policies, issues, and developing regarding cybersecurity, infrastructure, and more uh, and other important homeland security topics. But then down here it says, for general information sponsoring or to register, please click here or call that number. Now here is my problem with this. We're doing it on election day. The conference is the 6th and the 7th. But the large scale tabletop cybersecurity exercise is on election day. And this is coming right from their website. A government website telling you, well, maybe they wanted to keep it a secret, but they're doing a large scale cybersecurity exercise and they planned it on election day. Now, I'm not saying that they've done anything or that they plan on doing anything, but I want to just bring you a scenario real quick. There was a temporary glitch in the uh, fact that parallel to the election day voting, Homeland Security was running a crucial but unrelated cybersecurity exercise and wires got crossed, right? Nothing to see here. The problem was sick, fixed, and the exercise proceeded, as did the vote count. Nothing happened. Occasionally, these things happen when we're trying to, I don't know, protect our homeland. Homeland Security exercise had nothing to do with the vote count. No, 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 no. You see how this is going to play out? This is my opinion anyway. I, that, that's the way it could play out. Now, why would they plan this for Election Day? When we already have thoughts, you know, from sea to shining sea that our government is up to some really shady stuff when it comes to our elections. Why wouldn't they just plan this for another day? Scheduling a major homeland security cyber attack simulation on our critical infrastructure on election day? At the very least, it's a great way for people to not trust their government even more, right? Let me show it to you one more time here. I'll flip my camera around. There it is. The AFCEA Atlanta Homeland Security Conference large scale cyber security exercise on election day. COVID-19 pandemic has shaken our economies and societies to the core and shown us how vulnerable we are to biological threats. In the digital world, similar risks are being overlooked right now. A cyber attack with COVID-like characteristics would spread faster and further than any biological virus. Its reproductive rate would be around 10 times greater than what we've experienced with the coronavirus. To give you an idea, one of the fastest worms in history 
the 2003 slammer Sapphire Worm doubled in size approximately every 8.5 seconds, infecting over 75,000 devices in 10 minutes and almost 11 million devices in 24 hours. Fortunately, at least until now, cyber attacks have not impacted our health the way pandemics have, but the economic damages, and therefore the impact they have had on our daily lives, have been equal and sometimes even greater. You see, the only way to stop the exponential propagation of a COVID-like cyber threat is to fully disconnect the millions of vulnerable devices from one another and from the internet. All of this in a matter of days. A single day without the internet would cost our economies more than 50 billion US dollars, and that's before considering the economic and societal damages should these devices be linked to essential services, such as transport or healthcare. As the digital realm increasingly merges with our physical world, the ripple effects of cyber attacks on our safety just keep on expanding at a faster pace than what we're preparing for. COVID-19 was known as an anticipated risk. So is the digital equivalent. Let's be better prepared for that one. The time is now. Understand, it's not necessary for people to believe this information in order to weaken democratic institutions. You just have to flood a country's public square with enough raw sewage. You just have to raise enough questions, spread enough dirt, plant enough conspiracy theorizing that citizens no longer know what to believe. Once they lose trust in their leaders, in mainstream media, in political institutions, in each other, in the possibility of truth, the game's won. All these cyber attack hiccups that we've seen up until now throughout this year, throughout last year, pertaining to AT&T and Verizon, and uh, you know, internet providers and cable television providers, energy providers. You know, we remember the whole crowd strike uh, cyber, you know, attack that had happened, and that's what I'm going to call it because that's absolutely what it was. They're going to try to cover up and say it's something else. You know, with AT&T, they said it was some form of SIM card update that went awry, and that's just absolutely not the truth. And I'm not going to lie to people. All right, uh, we absolutely have seen time and time again them practicing something, practicing shutting down the grid, and that crowd strike was the biggest. The crowd strike grid grid down is what I'm going to call it was the biggest situation that we've had so far when it came to cyber attacks it shut down airports it shut down gas stations it affected even here uh, where I live things locally uh, uh, you know with such a small area that I even live in it affected everybody you know it affected the cell phones like I said it affected the internet people have had you know situations where they can't send out texts and things like this and it's interesting because we're supposed to have 5g it's supposed to be some system that's this amazing fast quick internet and the internet situation the internet provider situation the cell phone uh signals the text signals all this stuff is worse than it's ever been they are practicing for something absolutely massive they are practicing for what we're talking about next why can't we talk more openly and publicly about stocks. Two answers before you even get started. I don't know, and if I did, we wouldn't talk about it anyway. Something as simple and innocuous as this becomes a challenge for all of us to maintain accountability control of our critical infrastructure systems. This actually contains the Stuxnet virus. It's impacting industrial control. Is this something that's coming after the homeland? If you get up in the morning and turn off your alarm and make coffee. Power plants, power grids. And pump gas. Transportation, telecommunication. And use the ATM, you've touched industrial control systems. It's what powers our lives. Most of these systems are relatively easy for a sophisticated hacker to get into. The security experts who are studying Stuxnet really think it required the resources of a nation state. It spread to any Windows machine in the entire world. We didn't know if it was set to turn off all electricity plants around the world or it would start shutting things down or launching some attack. It was blowing up centrifuges and it was leaving no trace. There have been assassinations of nuclear scientists. 
some human assets had to be involved. Spies. It went beyond our worst fears, our worst nightmares. This is not your ordinary criminal doing this. This is someone bigger. The monster turned against its creators. And now everyone is in this game. This has the whiff of August 1945. Somebody just used a new weapon. And this weapon will not be put back into the box. You've been focusing on Stuxnet, but that was just a small part of a much larger mission. I need to know that you're on the level with me. No matter how far this thing goes, I need to know that we're good. Because of what just happened here is happening everywhere. We need to get to that bunker Danny told us about, and we need to get there now. What are you talking about? You know something. I had a sneaking suspicion, but I wanted more information first. All sides were there, sure, but I... I didn't want to scare anyone. You would have called me crazy because it is crazy. It would have made more sense if we were on the brink of an all-out invasion. But this... I didn't think we'd actually let something like this happen. I thought we were smarter than that. Wait, what happened? Because my primary client works in the defense sector, I spent a lot of time studying the cost-benefit analysis of military campaigns. There was one program in particular that terrified my client the most. A simple three-stage maneuver that could topple a country's government from within. The first stage was isolation. Disable their communication and transportation. Make the target as deaf, dumb, and paralyzed as possible. And setting them up for the second stage. Synchronized chaos. Terrorize them with covert attacks and misinformation. Overwhelming their defense capabilities, leaving their weapon systems vulnerable to extremists in their own military. Without a clear enemy or motive, people would start turning on each other. Done successfully, the third stage would happen on its own. What's the third stage? A coup d'etat. Civil War. Collapse. This program was considered the most cost-effective way to destabilize a country. Because if the target nation was dysfunctional enough, it would, in essence, do the work for you. Whoever started this wants us to finish it. 